year is 1908. And right here in the UK, the suffragettes are fighting for a woman's right to vote. What if every planned protest was preemptively crushed and the votes for women banners had never been raised? Or 1963, a sunny afternoon in Washington, D.C. Imagine Dr. King never makes it to the Lincoln Memorial. Police barricades, preemptive arrests deter the swelling crowd. The I have a dream speech never echoes through the National Mall. Or 1969 at a bar in New York City, the Stonewall Inn. What if the dawn of the LGBTQ rights movement were replaced with swift detentions, silent streets? Now, the idea of a protest being stopped before it can begin isn't fantastical, and it isn't something that might only happen somewhere else. It is actually the reality of what recent legislative change in the UK really means, and it's something that we all need to open our eyes to. So like many of you, I grew up hearing those stories of the power of movements, and I've always really felt that joy and potential of acting together collectively. And now, as the co-executive director here at Friends of the Earth, I get to see firsthand what the communities that we work alongside need from us to make change. That can be all the way from a cup of tea and a compassionate ear up to us taking cases to the Supreme Court. Friends of the Earth has been on the side of People and Planet for more than 50 years. We fought and often won on pretty much any environmental issue that you might think of, from acid rain to rainforests, from whales to bees, from air pollution to plastics and recycling. We advise citizens on how we can gather together to act legally for positive change and to oppose threats to our communities. And I have to tell you, the changes that we see to the law really worry us. If you haven't felt the need to protest yet, you never know when you might need to. Of course, non-violent protest has been an integral part of pretty much any meaningful change in our society, and it's always played a key role in protecting our communities, our environment. Back in 1932, 400 working-class ramblers trespassed on Kinder Scout in the beautiful Peak District. Five of them were convicted of breach of the peace and unlawful assembly and sentenced to between two and six months. Now, the public outcry about those sentences was really pivotal in the formation of our national parks. Or more recently, 2019, the school strikes, where students all over the world walked out of their classrooms every week to raise the alarm on the climate crisis. That paved the way to the UK's climate target. Every week, in fact, in villages, in towns, in cities, we gather to draw attention to whatever matters to our community, right? Whether that is uh, saving a local library, protecting a really precious piece of green space, or fighting fossil fuel developments. And that brings me to Tina Rothery. Here she is. And also, I believe, here she is. Hey. <laughs> Now, Tina didn't consider herself an activist or a campaigner, but in 2011, a leaflet came through her door about a proposed fracking site down the road. Now, she might not have thought she was an activist or campaigner, but what Tina was and is, is passionate about her community. Now, the looming threat of fracking changed her life. With our help, she founded the amazing anti-fracking group, The Nanas, back in 2014. Here are some of them. These women, amazing women, many are mothers and grandmothers, many new to activism and campaigning. Now, we worked alongside them for more than eight years. There were demonstrations, conversations, letters, emails, lots of meetings, tears, 
community organising, and finally, in 2019, we won. <laughs> the government ordered a moratorium on fracking, and this prevented a vast number of future polluting emissions from what would have been a whole new fossil fuel infrastructure in this country. And it also, of course, stopped the destruction of the countryside. Now, communities facing fracking didn't start with protest. In fact, Tina was telling me that at the beginning, they thought simply that the government would see sense. <laughs> they didn't. So protest became eventually an absolutely essential part of that campaign. Communities facing fracking protested and demonstrated at council meetings, at fossil fuel company headquarters, at the drilling sites themselves, at, on high streets for years. Some of those protests were noisy. Some will have caused irritation or annoyance to some, serious disruption possibly to others. But we simply wouldn't have won that campaign without it. We wouldn't have with litigation or lobbying alone. The most powerful campaigns often use a combination of all of those methods. The most powerful campaigns also have the communities directly affected at their heart, like this did. So, let's take a look at some of the things that campaigners like Tina and many others have done when they've used protest as part of an overall campaign. So that might be linking arms, sitting down, slow walking, doing a, kind of, doing a protest in person, gathering. Now, it would take me the entire evening to go through all the detail of the changes in legislation in this country over the last two years. The new offences, the new police powers, the lower thresholds, the higher penalties. Much of this, by the way, has been derived directly from terrorism and violent crime legislation, which might just tell us something about how Westminster views protesters. So let's remove those things which now are more likely to be considered unlawful, more likely to have police restrictions placed on them, more likely to risk arrest. Let's remove those from that list. Here's the thing. These changes, they might not deter those people who might have been willing or even intending to be arrested, right? But what they will do is create huge uncertainty for everyone else about what is legal and what might just not be. Now, that uncertainty creates a chilling effect, and that will deter people from standing up to be heard, deter people from exercising our right to challenge those in power. It's a pattern, right, that we might recognize from authoritarian regimes across the world, from uncertainty to a chilling effect, to an effectively a deterrent. But this isn't a somewhere else problem. It's happening right here. So in 2021, Civicus, the International Civic Freedoms Monitor, put the UK on a watch list, a watch list of countries with rapidly declining freedoms. Although we started on a different place in the scale, we were on that list alongside Afghanistan, Belarus, Nicaragua. Then in 2023, Civicus downgraded the UK from narrowed to obstructed to represent the hostile environment now facing campaigners, civil society and charities. Narrowed to obstructed here in the UK. This isn't a somewhere else problem. This is happening right here, right here on our watch. 
So I was thinking about the moment that I realized we can change what happens on our watch. I was probably about nine. I was having a conversation with my aunt in the kitchen. I think about the Amazon rainforest. And I said to her, yeah, but I'm, what can I do about that? You know, I'm only, I'm only one person. Don't ever let me hear you say that again. <laughs> she said to me with a force that I can still remember, even though she claims that uh, she doesn't remember this incident. She continued, the only thing that has ever, will ever change things is ordinary people like you standing up for what they believe in and working together. So if you haven't yet felt you need to protest, you never know when you might need to. Imagine any future voice, a future Martin Luther King or Emmeline Pankhurst or Marsha P. Johnson, any voice that might need to stand up to power, like Tina's, yours. Imagine every voice silenced before it can speak out. Think of those generations gone before us who have fought for the freedom to stand up to power. Each generation, this generation, has a responsibility to guard those rights, those freedoms, for anyone who might need them, now or in the future. So although the goals of any protest might not be your personal goals, the right to protest matters to all of us and is a fundamental part of a healthy democracy. Thank you.